Good afternoon. So maybe um, a, a few words about your role and, and to describe IDO for those who do not know IDO yet. Sure. Th thank you, uh, Francois, uh, for having me and having uh, IDO today. Um, IDO is building um, a financial products for professional investors. We've been in the in the space for um, about 16 years, uh, uh, at least our team, not IDO itself, uh, which is a bit more recent. We started a company four years ago. Um, the the reason why um, the reason why you, uh, I, I found interesting to to come tonight and you you kindly invited us is that we've realized that the, the amount of um, structured products traded in the world uh, basically doubled in the last in less than three years. And a big chunk of that uh, increase uh, is coming from the corporate world. So we thought, well, it's, it's, um, it's a segment that we've been knowing for quite some time. And um, uh, we thought it would be interesting to have a discussion with uh, uh, some of the investors uh, we, uh, we are addressing today. Maybe just a quick word about uh, structured products for those not being familiar with this asset class. The structured products are basically um, instrument issued by banking institutions uh, and uh, um, that are bespoke, totally bespoke to the investors' needs. So uh, in the corporate world, most of the instruments would be uh, capital guaranteed instruments um, with basically fixed or floating coupons or any sort of risk you want to put behind or you don't want to put behind your, your, your return. So this is how we define circuit products. In IDO, it's a Luxembourgish French company uh, with a tech division, some of my colleagues here um, are from the tech division, building a platform that streamlines the investment process uh, in, the, in these products. <clears throat> so, yeah. So why include structural products in treasury, in treasury management? Um, the, 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 number one, the number one thing would be predictability uh, that structural products could bring. So obviously structural products are not uh, a replacement to any short-term uh, cash management solution, not at all. They should never be used uh, that way. That is a very, that is a very good reason not to use structured products. But uh, I would say beyond one year um, uh, for the medium-term uh, and, and, and lo obviously long-term liquidity buckets, structured products are a fantastic way to um, Take the risk you exactly want to take on your cash and the cash that is available to the company, and to uh, introduce predictability to, uh, uh, to to your cash management. So you sh you could they, for for some time they they were seen as an additional risk you introduce to your treasure. Actually, this is a very good way to repo repositionate your risk. Sometimes the risk is not taking any risk. Um, they are not more risky than any bonds or the products. They can be anything, basically, uh, uh, since it is bespoke. So you can actually decide to put uh, uh, the risk exactly where you want to um, introduce efficiency in your cash management. And those products, for quite some time, suffered from not only reputation, but the reality of deteriorated liquidity. Uh, this issue has been uh, uh, addressed, and this is now uh, not something you have to give up for when trading structured products uh, by opposition to other instruments. So I think this is probably when we're asking our corporate clients the reason why they increase their uh, investment in structured products. That's probably the reason. One of the reasons is uh, that the liquidity has been improved uh, uh, quite significantly uh, across the past years. <clears throat> um, so the real events in particular for uh, corporate investors um, I've mentioned, uh, obviously, the complements to traditional uh, uh, instruments. Um, this is really, those are really products that can be sued in any market environment. This is not one payoff, this is obviously an infinity of payoff that you can make with structured products. So whether the yield curve is inverted, whether uh, it is flat, whether you have a lot of volatility in the, um, uh, the, 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 the rates, uh, structured products can either take advantage or hedge you against those uh, movements and can actually help you to take advantage of this context. Uh, one very important point I will discuss further is that the number of players have increased, the number of players and structured products issuers have increased, and that consequently makes that there's been a standardization of the products 
the different payoffs uh, and, con and consequently a, a pricing improvement on this product. So that they're a lot less expensive than they used to be. Uh, I think this is another reason, another reason that explains the uh, success of those products in, in, the, in the past years. Um, so as I said, uh, they wouldn't be suited for anything under a year. I don't think it's efficient. Uh, for the liquid, liquidity buckets between one and three years, there are a lot of use cases that we see among our clients. Uh, and obviously three years and above, um, this is where probably 85 to 90% of the volumes are trading in, in their uh, corporate world, where we see a way, for example, at the moment to secure um, yields uh, when we see that there's a lot of uncertainty with the curve and where the rates will be uh, a potential recession, a lot of uncertainty and structured products would actually uh, introduce predictability again uh, by offering, in this case, secured return for the next five, seven years. So that is definitely something for strategic cash in that obviously uh, short-term uh, needs. So just a couple of things to have in mind. Um, obviously not investing in products that you would understand. That's pretty obvious, but um, I think the mistake have been done in the past. Um, the, 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 the products are fantastic. Uh, the way you use them is what determines how they will perform. So if you, um, I, I, would I would say like, keep it simple. There are lots of very simple plain vanilla structured products just, uh, just, just, just don't go beyond what you understand, what your investment committee understands. Just make sure, obviously, you have the right partner. If it's your bank, if it's an independent player, just make sure they wouldn't push you uh, to make things you don't actually understand. Uh, so we, we'll come, uh, we'll come a, li a little bit later to this notion of um, what is exactly important when it comes to invest in structured products. But that is a very first, um, 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 I would say. Uh, point to, to have in mind. Um, liquidity, I've mentioned it. Um, obviously not underestimating the, um, the issuer's risk. Um, obviously uh, Lehman Brothers will, rem well, I mean, I think a lot of us, I hope, remember that Lehman Brothers was still double A minus, I believe, just before it collapses. So this is not something to neglect. And, and, and um, um, obviously there are a lot of solutions that have emerged, notably in the, in the, in the, in the past years, to diversify and mitigate the uh, credit risk of the issuer. So uh, having return, but with a diversified and controlled uh, credit risk. Um, working with a regulated partner, that can seem a little bit funny, um, but you have no idea how frequently we see is there no regulated entities or entities not being regulated in the country where the client investor is based, uh, which obviously when things go wrong, if things go wrong, that poses a lot of issues. So you are regulated in Luxembourg? Yeah, we are, we are, we are regulated by the French regulator and passported in all of the 27. Um, but but it's, it's, some, it's something very important. Not, not that you don't find competent people in, in companies that are not regulated, it's just they have no guarantee when it goes wrong. So um, um, our, our companies, for example, submitted to the uh, different ratios uh, uh, that, that an investment firm uh, should respect. Uh, that is not fun to leave, but this is something uh, uh, obviously very important. Um, <clears throat> and obviously, I would say a plus in you know, the independence from the issuer. Obviously, banks are um, yeah. um, banks are great, but your your bank can 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 act as an independent player uh, if if your um, um, if your bank is, is, is doing it properly, they would not try to sell you every day. It's like in-house solution. So you should ask for, if, if your partner on structured products is your bank, it's like, I don't want to see your in-house solution. They're pretty often uh, uh, not, not efficient, at least not efficient for the, for the investor. Uh, and, and the bank can play and, and speak to other players in the market. I think this is a very important approach to making sure you trade the best solution at the best price, by the way. Um, recent market evolution, I've spoken about the liquidity. Um, uh, on that point, it's, it's, uh, th th there's just one reason for which liquidity is improved, that banks and risk departments within 
uh, the product issuers have uh, imposed like some guidelines uh, to banks on liquidity. Uh, so we've seen, uh, and, and again, I think this is one of the very important um, uh, point and reasons behind the success of structured products in the last year is that this, is, this has improved massively. Um, and uh, um, I, think, I think regulators have done a, a good job on that too. Um, product standardization, I've mentioned that you have more players, the payoffs are uh, priceable by more players, so obviously there's more competition and better pricing. This is as simple as that, but when I started in 2009, we used to speak to five, six bank active on structured product. Now we have a network of about 35 different product issuers, so the competition is obviously a lot um, uh, more important and consequently the pricing is the pricing's improved, uh, which give investor pricing power. Um, Valuation of structured products. So I will stay very high level on that point because uh, books have been written on, <laughs> on that. Um, but very high level, there's a credit component like, like a bond, zero coupon bond, put it this way, and an option part. So um, the option part is dependent on you know, uh, lots of the usual, what we call uh, factors, the Greeks, the so-called Greeks. Um, and the credit part, the fixed income instrument, will basically uh, depend on, on the credit issuer spreads, but obviously uh, the interest rates on the maturity, uh, on the product maturity, investment horizon. Um, so this is the, how the products are built. Uh, the values, as I said, uh, the product value, we depend on the factor I've just mentioned before. Um, the um, implication and maybe the advice to Treasury is not, not thinking about Focusing on understanding the product and how it's built. We're all using our phones and our watches, but no one here, um, uh, very few people at least, we know exactly how the, the watch uh, is working. But it's very important to understand what will influence your, your product, uh, not to create uh, deceptions. And if you don't want a deceptive products about the mark-to-market -market value, you have to, 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 to select something that wouldn't be too much uh, sensitive to the credit spreads, for example, and, and there are ways of mitigating that. So it's very important to understand what would affect your product rather than understanding, understanding the product itself and exactly how it's built and what is the option strategy behind that. That wouldn't help. Um, obviously aligning the product selection with, with specific needs and, and also with your specific market um, and your specific industry. Um, leveraging advice or expertise, obviously, um, and ignoring unnecessary technical layers, and I would say ignoring and disregarding complexity um, is important. Thank you, Francois. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, so a, a few comments and questions. So we understood the idea of diversification, so go longer to, to extract some yield. We see that um, the yield curve should soon, we hope, uh, move and, and recoup a, a, a more normal shape, I would say. So uh, uh, what is the role of, of technology behind? Because it, it helps to value the product at any moment in time and also to, to, to make some sensitivity analysis of simulation. Um, the technology can help uh, before and after um, investing in a product. So before it's about... Um, some solutions that um, would, would, would give like uh, performance projections, for example. So you would be able, able to evaluate what are the chances of this product working or not. Um, like this product has 92% chances of delivering the promised return when the return is not guaranteed. You can obviously have product with guaranteed return, but if you're uh, happy to give up a little bit of this guaranteed return and expect a higher return, you want to make your investment decision based on what are the chances of actually getting this uh, additional return. So um, the technology we're using and where we're leveraging um, AI and in-house algorithm is about helping you predict uh, or helping you assess more than predict, basically. Helping you assess the risk you're taking um, uh, by, by having like a, a platform with a percentage that telling you you have X percent chances of this happening in this product. And this is really game changing when it comes to make um, obviously better investment decisions. So this is for the pre-investment part. And then for the post-investment part, what we call life cycle management, um, you have a number of platforms, uh, including ours, uh, helping with um, 
getting notified about any event in the product lifetime, which is the basis of uh, what a platform should do on that part. But more than that, again, we're introducing um, elements that we tend to tell you during the lifetime of the product, what are the chances of the product, you know, being called before maturity, for example, or being auto-called or being whatever, of a coupon being delivered and at which level. So that would help you make, again, better investment decisions and, and, and obviously save your resources, which are both aspects. Uh, because reconciliating, like, uh, uh, you know, your bank reporting when they exist and, you know, when they have relevant information, which is almost never the case, um, is, is very, very time consuming. So, this is where technology so intervenes. Products that are held or supposed to be held to maturity, but when it comes to, let's say, even like COVID, where we are forced to, to get some liquidity, so you can also ensure the liquidity of the product. So, so uh, the COVID was a very good test for that. So we've seen uh, uh, um, panicked investors and panicked providers, to be frank. Um, it, it, was, it, was, it was a very good stress test that showed that um, liquidity was there. Uh, obviously, the, the, the capital being guaranteed on the product maturity wh when it is guaranteed. Okay. We also trade products with uh, capital not being guaranteed, but the capital being guaranteed on the, on the product maturity you obviously have this mark to market. Uh, and having this before the European debt crisis, um, before that, the GFC, uh, this is where we could, we could see that the, actually, the, the liquidity actually improved. Uh, the mark to market levels were far better than what we've seen before. So obviously, um, no banking institution would guarantee liquidity 100%. It would still be in the term sheet, like on a best effort basis in, in uh, you know, um, the, the, the bid offer spread would be X percent, usually 1%. Mm -hmm. um, but the reality proved that uh, uh, recently liquidity has improved and, and, and that's, that, that was a very good point. And on top of the platform, the product you are proposing, you're also giving some pieces of advice when it comes to, to, to product, to shape the product to, to the needs or the risk profile of the customers? Yeah, we... So we, we would not give advice on whether, you know, um, uh, tomorrow will be sunny or rainy and where the markets are going. Um, we, we, we tend to keep this opinion for ourselves because it's not our job. Our job is to really understand what is important to uh, the person in the company we're, we're talking to at the moment. We had the, um, so, uh, that example of um, um, the, the treasurer of a, of a large SME uh, in 2020 that identified as its number one risk was inflation on the type of business he was dealing with. So we built a product that, instead of paying a guaranteed coupon for a strategic cash, was paying 70% uh, of the guaranteed coupon he could, could expect, not to do a full coupon, but he would put a little bit at risk and having coupon, uh, coupons linked to inflation. It proved obviously very resilient when uh, you know, the, the Ukraine war uh, kicked in and, and things went wrong on the, on the front of inflation. So obviously that is a very, uh, uh, cherry picked, cherry pick example, but we have just very often situations where an active and a proactive management of strategic cash can help absorb uh, activity shocks. And this is, I think, really uh, what structured products are made for. And I guess if our members want to, to get any idea of an example of products, you can certainly uh, explain the type of products. Uh, they could uh, invest in and to also see the, the return and the, let's say the advantage of, of being, let's say, uh, uh, invested in this longer term product, but mm -hmm. with a better, uh, let's say, return and, uh, and to get more yield than what we have today, especially after the recent yeah. <laughs> cut by the ECB. So thanks a lot. Uh, Arthur will, will stay around. Thank so you, if you have any, any questions. So I would like to, to close this uh, uh, presentations.